Hey guys, welcome to Code Decode. Today in this video, we are going to cover some most asked Java 8 scenario based interview questions, which we have got from the comment section, few of them through the emails. So we have collected few questions which are very commonly asked in interviews nowadays. Please like, share and subscribe to support us and we are setting a like target of 500 likes. So the very first question that we're going to cover is how to find uh, duplicate elements in a stream in Java using Java 8. So there are multiple ways you can uh, find a solution to this question, but the interview will focus on using Java 8 to figure uh, the solution out for this. So let's get started with the very first and very simple method to find duplicate elements in a stream using Java 8. And what we are going to use is a very simple uh, class, collection class, which is set. So for the demonstration purpose, I'm going to use this get all method, which we used in our CRUD application. Here, the POJO, which we're going to use is this POJO, which is an employee POJO. These are five rows. So these are my five employees. And what I want to do is, I want to find duplicate names. So if you can see in these five rows, code is the duplicate name, right? And rest all are the unique ones. So what our target is to at the end of this method, we should find only the those names which are duplicate. So let's first fetch all the names from the repository and how to do that. Let's create a list of names first. So repo.findall will give you all the employees. Now from it, you open a stream. As soon as you open the stream, you are capable enough to map each and every employee object to its name. So by this point of time, I have went into my repository and asked to find all of the employees. As soon as I got all the employees, I've opened a stream on that list because find all returns you the list of employees. From that list, I've opened a stream. In that stream, I'm saying map each element that you get. So what we get here is one code decode updated one and 30. I'm mapping this whole object to just its name because we are going to work upon only the names. As soon as we do that, we are going to collect it to list with collectors.toList method. So far, so good. We have list of all the names available in repo. And what I'm going to create is first a set of unique names. So this is how I'm going to create a set. Now we have a method in set, right? Dot add method. What does this add method do? This add method specifies that if the el specified element here is not present, then add it and return true. If the set already contains the element, then the set is remained unchanged and it returns false because it doesn't have added any kind of element into the set. Thus, we are going to use this add method to filter out those elements who are added to these unique elements. Let's open names in a repo dot stream. Now, since it's a list, I'm opening a stream to it and I'm going to filter out only those names such that each name when added to a set returns you false. I'm going to add it to unique names dot add and I'm going to collect it to set. So what I've done here, all the names which are in repository, I have open a stream to it and then I'm going to filter out only those names which when added to the set gives you false. That means the first time I'm trying to add code, the unique name is empty. So when I try to add code, it will return me true. The filter gives me false and hence it's not going to filter out. So this Boolean condition returns you false and that code is not filtered out. Second time you add D code, it says the unique names contains only code. When adding D code, it says no, this set doesn't contains D code and hence add it happily. When you add it happily, it returns you true and this whole condition gives you false and D code is also not filtered out. Now try to add code again. This unique names contains code and decode now. You have code, comma decode now. When you try to add code again, it says, I'm going to add it. It says, no, I unique names already contains code. So it is not going to add and returns you false. When it returns you false, the negation of false becomes true. And hence this filter conditions returns you true. When it returns you true, the, the name, which is code is going to be collected to a set and, and I'm collected in a set named as duplicate names. And I'm going to return this duplicate names to you now. Now in this example, this is unique, this is unique, but code is not unique, it's duplicate. So my duplicate name should contains only and only code. 
the server is running for me it's it's up and running for me so i'll quickly run the find all for me so this is the output it's filtering only duplicate names and returning it to me let's try returning unique names now so when i run this unique name these are the unique names i get code decode updated one and updated two these are not in the insertion order because we are using a set so it's not going to be maintaining its order that is why it's jumbled up so with the simple these three lines of code you are not only just able to find unique names you are also to find duplicate names and if your interview ask you to find out unique names this is what you are going to return if they ask you to find duplicate names this is what you are going to return so just three line of code and you are able to answer the two types of questions in an interview the second way is a very interesting way the second way we are going to cover is collectors dot grouping by now since we have not covered grouping by in details by the moving with this flow i'm going to cover grouping by also so let's get started i'm going to delete all this right now all these two methods i'm just going to keep the way to find all the names from the repository so our thought process in this particular scenario of fetching the duplicate element only is why not let's create a map a map with key and a value key should be your unique name and value should be how many times it is repeated so with this scenario you can cover two interview questions first how many times a particular name is repeated and secondly fetch the duplicate elements so with this thought process what we are going to do is create a map with key value pair key should be name value should be the count the frequency the number of times it is repeated and then fetch only and only those whose value in the key value pair is greater than 1 so only code is going to have the value as 2 rest all the value is going to be 1 so output should be again code let's open a stream and let's try to create the map how would you create a key value pair map so first collect each and every name with a collectors dot grouping by now what does this grouping by actually do it creates a key value pair how does it do that it actually takes a function so if you can see this is the first argument is a function each and every input that comes to this particular grouping by applies a function on the input and makes it as a key the second input to this grouping by is going to create a value for you how is going to create a value this is going to have some reduction functionality so i want my key to be the input itself so what input i'm going to take is going to by my key here i want my key to be the name itself when you open a stream each and every name which is going to be is going to be my key so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use function dot identity and i'm going to count it so collectors dot counting so what i've said is you i need a map a key value pair key is going to be my input itself how i'm going to tell group by that whatever is coming is going to be my key this is a way to do that what does this function dot identity method do it returns a function so we need the grouping by needs the first argument's function so this returns a function satisfies the first condition then i want my input as the key how will you do that it always return the same input argument it gets so what does this function dot identity do it returns what it gets simple as that so the first argument is the input itself which is coming and the and the function of it now the second argument says count it what i'm going to get is code with two rest all with one because it's counting it and this is going to return you a map so i'm going to take it in a map too string comma long map of names so long should be the not the primitive one so this counting returns you a long that is why i have collected it to a long and i'm going to return it to you one so that at least you can see we are good enough to at least be able to create a map of this pojo object which we are giving as an input so see we have created a map this map is a key value pair the key is the input and value is counting now why if we have five elements here why in your map you have just four rows that is because code comma 1 is overridden by code comma 2 if you go to this table the first thing that will add it to your map is code decode updated 1 comma 1 then second thing is updated 2 comma 
then code comma one, then decode comma one. But again, code comma one comes, it aggregates it. Why? Because key is the same, and counting increases from one to two. So this counting of code comma two overrides code comma one because it is a map, and in map. Key is going to be unique. So when code comes again, it replaces the initial code comma one with code comma two. That is why only four rows in output. Now you see that you have a map. The task is not over yet. If the interview asks you just give the frequency of how many times it is repeated, you are good here. But now we need to find duplicate element. In this map, you know you have key value pairs, and in value you have frequencies. So wherever you get the frequency greater than one, collect it, add it to set, and return it. That will be your duplicate element. So let's quickly do that now. With the entry set, you are going to get all the key value pairs in the set format, which is the entry object. It is capable enough to open a string because it's a collection at the end. Map is not a collection, but entry set is nothing but a set of entry object. On set, you can open a string because you can open a string on collection. You cannot do it here. So if you try, if you try to open a string here, you will not be able to do that. Why? Because map is not a collection. Remember the basics. When you open the string, you have an key value pairs now. So filter out only those entry objects whose entry dot value is greater than one. Once you filter out, you have to map each and every entry to its key because what you need at the end is. The name only. You don't need the frequency right now. So you are going to map each and every entry object with its key, and at the end collect it to set, which you are going to return. The method is collectors dot to set. That's it. You are good enough to collect it to a set now and return it. You should get only one name, which is code. So let's quickly run it and see. You have just got one name, which is code. So just to simplify again, what we have done, we have the list of all the names. Then we have created a map of a key value pair. The key is the name itself, and value is its frequency. That is collectors dot counting. Then with that map, you are going to filter out only those whose value is greater than one, and map each of those entry object, which is a key value pair, to only key because we just need the name, and collect that name to a set and return it. So you will get only the duplicate names. Now. You would ask me that you could have done these two lines in one line. So I'll say yes. Obviously, we can do that. But this is much more readable to me, and you will gain the trust of interviewers. You can also do this also. So how will you combine it? Here we were collecting it, right? Now when you were collecting it, a map is created. So on that map, you can create an entry set. The return type of this was map, right? So on that, I've opened an entry set and opened a stream on that map. And and done everything that we need to do, and at the end collected to the set. So the two line of code is converted into one line of code. But you cannot gain a trust of an interviewer by just writing this solution. Don't mug it up. Understand what we are doing. So it's good if you can divide it into two phases, like creating the map differently and then creating the uh, set of names differently, because it's a long process. It is at least visible what you are trying to do and what is your approach. Now the third, a very short and sweet approach. We are going to use collections class and use the frequency method of it. So how we are going to do it? I'm going to delete these two lines again, and on the stream, I'm going to filter each name and find its frequency. If frequency is greater than one, collect it to set and return. Very short and sweet. So in the list of names, I'm going to open a stream because it is a list. It is a collection. I can open a stream on it. As soon as you open a stream, you can filter out. Filter out only those names such that the name has frequency greater than one. So we have collections class and a method of a collections class name as frequency. And what does this frequency takes? It takes a list and the second argument, which is to be find in this particular list, and check whether the frequency is greater than one and collect it to a set. Very simple. So what does this frequency do? It returns the number of elements. In the specified collection, equal to given object. So this is the object you give. Name is the object you give, and you find in the list, and it gives you number of times this particular name is coming in this list of names. If it is greater than one, return it to a set. So we're going to create a set of names which are you, which are duplicate, whose frequency is greater than one, and let's run it. So see, 
the output is still just one that is code so these are the three ways in which you can do this so in the first way each and every method has its own advantage in the first way you not only find the duplicate element set but also unique element set so just two line of code and you're good enough to give your interview two things the unique set and the duplicate element set this showcases your in-depth knowledge upon grouping by the key and value pair and in-depth knowledge of how to return the same input as you get into a function. So that is function.identity and accounting. So you're not just able with this, this line of code, you are able to return all the names with their frequency in the given list of names. So these are the two advantages of using group by. Not just duplicate elements, but also each element with its frequency is returned with first line of code. And this is a very short and sweet. If you just want to finish this question as quickly as possible, use this particular method. So in the next video, I have to cover so much of things that is the uh, summary statistics, occurrence of a particular character in stream, slicing of stream. So we'll cover this in the second video. Thank you.